Hello? Is anyone there? Hello? Hello? Ah! What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. What episode number is it? It's 80. It's a great number. We've come a long way. But not, uh... We're not anywhere, we're not anywhere yet. Look at my shirt. Alright. Camera angle's bad. Um, there's no room in here. If you saw the desk I'm working with, this wobbly piece of shit of a desk that I'm working with, you, you would understand. Um, you know, I'm working on things, stuff's happening, I got more supplies coming in for the podcast, um... I'm even, once I get, uh, I have I have some stuff coming, once I get that stuff coming, I'm going to try to set up a soundboard with my iPad, and hopefully it works, it should, although I've, I've failed at a lot of things when it comes to this electronic stuff, but do you know what, I don't care, alright, I'm going to, I'm going to do what needs to be done whatever it takes i haven't given up on this microphone over here either good old samson you see him oh now i gotta quite the stretch to there he is samson that was wasn't a cheap microphone eh? okay i think what i need is a cloud filter maybe that was what my or whatever the fuck those, those things are called those blue Blue objects, you know what you know what I'm talking. Or you probably don't know what I'm talking about, actually, because they, um, you know, it's not common knowledge. Cloud, cloud limiter or whatever. I don't know what the fuck it's called, but it's like a blue square. You plug. Yeah, who cares? Okay, you don't want to hear about this shit. What we're here to talk about in episode 80 of the Dinamite Pood Coast is this right here. Whoops. I just did some magic and you didn't even get to see it. Right here, we've got the card. It's got one one little tiggity topic on there. Um, hold on. I'm trying to fucking fuck around here and fucking shit's not fucking working. Ooh, I'm gonna fucking snap. Okay. I'm a little bit dis disorganized right now. I'm off the fucking charts. Oh, there's two of them. Ah, sa, ka, 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 ka. Okay. Okay, okay. We're back to business here. So, I I was watching Rhett and Link's Ear Biscuits the other day, as usual, because I'm watching a podcast pretty well every moment I'm not doing something. Don't judge me. I didn't do my vocal warming exercises to loosen my, loosen my speech. So let's do that then. Let's do that right now. <sighs> Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Ah, free falling. That's all bullshit. I don't do. I don't actually do that stuff. Sometimes I do. No, I do. I I'm lying. I do that every time. It loosens up. It loosens you up. <laughs> I don't do it that like that though. That was a bit over dramatic. No, it wasn't. Where's Oliver? There he is. I knew you were here. He's always with me. What about? Well, okay. Here's what I need to do. We need to get on track here, cause I did a little bit of a. Where was it? I was talking about Red. Oh, yeah. Red and Link. I was watching the Red and Link 
Ear Biscuits. An older one. Not that old, but a little bit of an older one. Uh, and they did their top 10 most influential TV shows. Okay? And by that, I mean, and what they meant is uh, their the top 10 list is related to them specifically. The reasons why they like the shows. Um, whether that's because of uh, an emotional connection towards the show or whatever the case, as long as it's related to them. So this is my top 10, what I'm about to do, my top 10 most influential TV shows for me. All right? I sat down and I was thinking about uh, what TV shows have been involved in my life over the millennia, and I've narrowed it down to the to 10 TV shows, and I've got reasons for, for each one of them, and I'm pretty sure I probably missed a few, uh, but I do have some honorable mentions that I'll, I'll talk about after I list the top 10. Um, so let's get right into it! I feel strange again today. Don't judge me. Hey. Dive into the bank like, ah So, we'll start with number 10 and we'll work our way to number 1. Now this was, this was not easy, okay? I thought, I thought I could bust out a top 10 list in half an hour, but it took way longer than that. Because there's so many shows that I've seen... There's a lot of shows I haven't seen that I should have seen, but there's a lot that I have seen. And from the ones that I have seen, it's hard to pick just 10. It's hard to narrow it down to 10 faves. Because even the ones I'm going to mention in the honorable mentions, those are ones that I really wanted to put in this top 10 list. But I thought, These the ones I actually picked. They uh they trump they trump, they Donald Trump them. You know what I'm saying? You know how you know how you have those days where you just don't feel uh. You don't feel. You don't feel like you're on point. Feels like you're a little groggy. Like there's shit floating around in your brain and you want to just push it aside to get this thing done. But it's it's distracting and overpowering your current thoughts. Well, that's happening to me right now. But I'm going to I'm going to push through it. And you don't need to know. Right, Olive? Don't judge me. Okay. Let's stop with the gravy train, and let's get into the news. Number 10. Okay, before I get into this, I'll say there is a few of these that um, they're, they're, they're children shows. The shows from like the 90s or early 2000s. Some of them, not definitely not the majority of them. But I threw them in here because, like I said, it's my top 10 influential list. It's not about what I think the, the general public would uh, adore. This is my adorning list of television. So, starting with number 10, uh, you may or may not know it. Because I don't know if it was only a Canadian thing. I should have looked it up. Why didn't I look it up? That's what I was supposed to do. I forgot to put that information in here. So I'll look it up on the fly. So number 10 is uh, a show that was featured on YTV. Now YTV, I don't know if that was the original show, original channel it was on, but YTV 
was definitely a Canadian network. Um, it was fantastic. A great, a great, yeah. Okay. So Mystery Hunters, it is. It's a Canadian documentary television series aimed at a young audience. Aired on YTV and on Discovery Kids in the United States. So it did air in the United States. It was also dubbed in Japanese. Ha <laughs> uh, So there were two teenage hosts, Araya and Christina. They investigate real-life reports of mysteries such as spirits, legendary creatures, monsters, dinosaurs, and UFOs. It was definitely um, my favorite show for a long time as a child growing up. It was very, very uh, intriguing. It sucked you in. And it featured this guy named Doubting Dave in the show. Uh, he's he's a, a, a magician in real life. But in the show, he... Uh, you know, he, he goes he goes into depth on specific topics and he uses experiments to that you can do at home sometimes. And that you know, that was that was one of the main reasons I would watch the show. I liked I liked the mystery aspect of it where the two the two the two fellers, the guy and the girl they would go to crazy haunted places and whatnot. That was cool. But doubting Dave was what I looked forward to in the show. I remember that specifically. And not only that, but like, as you're watching the show, it's kind of scary for a young child. But scary in like a intriguing way. You want to you wanna keep watching it? You, you're scared, but you're learning at the same time, and there's the excitement factor. All in all. I mean, if I were to watch it now, I'd probably hate it. I don't think I would like it. But then, I couldn't get enough of it. Could not. You could not. I would sit and wait. Because, you know, back then we didn't have... I mean, the internet was a thing, but you couldn't just go on the internet and watch a TV show from YTV. Because, like, you're not guaranteed to find that specific of a show because it wasn't that popular so you wouldn't really find a copy of that on the internet and plus there was new episodes that were coming out all the time so there's no way you'd find that was on the internet so I had you had to wait for the episodes to come out every week or so it's not like nowadays where binging is the is the main activity these pajamas I'm wearing are if you could see how much they stretch I want to show. I want to show how much these fucking pajamas can stretch. It's pretty crazy. Look at this. Can you see? I can't even tell. Look right here. It's like. Can you see that? There's so much flex to these, to these jam jams. Why am I wearing pajamas anyway? I should be wearing a suit. I told you I'm feeling in a in a in a blogna mood today. It rained like a like a motherfucker yesterday. It rained last night. And it's just gloomy and cloudy out today. Normally that puts me in a fantastic mood. You smell that? It smells like freedom. Yeah. That's freedom. Ooh la la. Ooh. Ooh, baby, I love the way. Every day. Number nine. Another child show. Another child show featured on YTV, but not originally from that program this show uh oh god 
I got the gas. This show originally aired and is from, produced by, or whatever, Nickelodeon. Do you know what it is? Oh my god, I'm gonna puke. Get the burp out of me! It's, it was, I was obsessed with this show. Definitely, as a child, it was my all-time favorite show. You couldn't get me away from it. It it featured a sponge underwater and a starfish and a squirrel. You know what I'm talking about. Spongebob. Bob Le Punge, as they say in the French in the French world. We went over this in the podcast, remember? I said I used to like to draw him. Uh, I was also extremely inspired by this little yellow creature. Um, My entire room was SpongeBob. There was, I had like, you know, remember those stripped wallpaper? It was just like a strip of of your favorite cartoon character or whatever. That was SpongeBob. I had a SpongeBob clock. I had a SpongeBob bed. Sheets and pillowcases, I had Spongebob clothes, pajamas, slippers, Spongebob backpack, Spongebob pencils, Spongebob stickers on my laptop, (laughs) Spongebob, oh, my light switch was Spongebob, you know, you take the faceplate off and replace it with Spongebob, I had a picture of Spongebob that was signed by Steven Hillenberg, I had... Really, anything, like, even when I had fish, I would get Spongebob (laughs) characters to put in the fish tank. And the whole thing was Spongebob themed. Whenever I was in school, and the teacher had us do, like, some sort of drawing assignment. Like, I remember one time we had to, uh, we had to draw something for reduce, reuse, and recycling. And then they would feature it in a magazine or something. And so I drew Spongebob picking up garbage or something. (laughs) And then we had to carve pumpkins. I carved Spongebob in the pumpkin. Spongebob hats. Spongebob toothbrush. Spongebob toothpaste. Spongebob cutlery. Spongebob surrounded everything I did. And I threw it at the number nine spot. Why? I'm not a kid anymore, and I don't watch that shit anymore. But I get, if you were to ask me what was my favorite show as a, at that age, I would have most definitely put SpongeBob at number one. And the newer version of SpongeBob is not as good as it used to be, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm, number eight. Number eight is not a children's TV show, although children can watch it because I I most definitely watched it as a child. It uh, it it was one of those shows that could definitely be considered controversial if you were to watch it nowadays, because every little thing can be controversial. Um, there was the use of marijuana on the show uh they didn't actually show them smoking but you it was definitely implied and i think with that being said you probably know what show i'm going to say this is that is what is it you know it say it it's that 70s show that's right um i liked it as a child and i like it as an adult just talking about it right now almost makes me want to pop, pop right back in there and watch it again. Because as a child, and when I think about it now, it definitely brings back memories just thinking about the show. It takes me back to specific, a specific friend's house that I used to watch it at, and the things that we did, and that's a really key factor in picking these top 10 shows. Um, 
but I also remember I remember the fact that they were smoking weed and you could see that they would show the smoke and then the camera would circle around to each character that was in the circle passing the joint around but you'd never see the joint but you you knew that's what was happening and that was something you'd never seen in a show before that's something you never seen that and so that was new and whenever something new and possibly controversial happens in a TV show it's definitely attracting you know nowadays you see marijuana in pretty pretty well every show everywhere on YouTube it's so there was that plus the dad figure and the mother figure were both they were like opposite they were on opposite sides of the spectrum when it came to funny like the the red red foreman is on the like the real real conservative side but he's super funny in his way and then the mother she was more on the other side but she but she also was very funny and there's not a lot of like you you watch shows the mother character is usually not funny you know i hate to say that but the mother character is usually you know has her moments but it's not like a is it's never anybody's favorite character but in this show um whatever the hell her name was i can't remember her character was very funny and a lot of people actually liked had her as the as the favorite character and you know what i could consider that too but i don't know if i if i can say for sure that she's my favorite that 70s show Ash, ashton kutcher miley Mila kunis they were a couple in the show and they're a couple in real life. Oh, oh! I just thought of another show. I gotta throw in the honorable mentions. I'm not gonna tell you what it is till we get there, though. Bada boom, bada bing. See, I knew I was gonna forget a bunch of shows. And there's definitely shows that I'm gonna remember once this video is uploaded. And I'm gonna kick. <coughs> <coughs> Myself in the I forgot Yeah, did you hear that? Mm hmm. You hear what I said? Good. Just making sure we're still recording here. Good, good, good. Number seven. Now this, this show. Let me let me look up where it aired, because I'm not sure. Uh, this show. Um, you could say it was directed towards children but adults could definitely watch this show and enjoy it um oh okay it was broadcasted on fox the first first broadcast was in 2000 the year 2000 january 9th 2000 last for six seasons um if you 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 even if you didn't watch the show you would know what the show is as soon as I say the title. You would have heard of it. Heard it. Heard of it. Um, and again, another show that could be considered controversial for the things that happen in it. Um, another family oriented show. It has uh, two specific actors in it who blew up and one who blew up more recently um <clears throat> one of those characters being frankie muniz the other being brian cranston okay uh so you know what show i'm talking about malcolm in the middle malcolm this this is a great show for kids this is a great show for adults has lots of kid humor but at the same time, it's like they're injecting lots of subliminal adult humor. Not even subliminal, just adult humor that the kids won't pick up on. But if you're an adult watching that show, you're definitely going to pick up on that stuff. 
And so you can watch the show as a kid, and then you watch it again when you're older, and you, you, you pick up on the stuff that you missed, and it's even better. And for that reason, I'm in. Uh, and not only that, each episode was a very creative and unique concept. And the controversial part comes into play with the abusive mother. I'm pretty sure she used to hit her kids in the show, right? Like with brooms and shit? I might be mistaken, but that's the controversial part I was talking about. But it don't matter. I thought it was funny. Beep, beep, bop, boop. And Brian Cranston's character, Hal, he was like the relaxed. Well, not really relaxed. He was like on edge, but nervous and type father. He never really got angry at the kids. The mother was the aggressor. And that's something you don't see as well in a lot of TV shows. Olive, why are you breathing so heavy? Okay, number six. This show, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure if it deserves to be on this list. I almost want to swap it out with one of these honorable mentions because although it is a good show and I liked it as a kid (laughs) I almost feel like one of the honorable mentions could take its place well whatever I'll just leave it in maybe I'll do another one of these one day an updated version with 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 more accurate listings but anyway so number six um i love i it was a great show i grew up with it and again it brings back memories um uh this is a show you that you can watch with your parents or as a kid and it's good either way and it's it wasn't really controversial i don't think um but it was it was more of like a just a basic sitcom type show. Just your basic show, nothing too harsh, nothing too out of the ordinary. But each episode kept you entertained and uh the memories associated. And that that show is I put at number six, but I don't know if I'm keeping it there, is Home Improvement. With Tim Alon. Okay? And because I'm on the fence with it right now, I'm just going to move on to number five. Um, Now, this show is not... The show at number five is not a typical sitcom. It's not even a sitcom. It's not... I don't even know what category. You could put it maybe as a game show category, but it's not really a game show. Um, There was four specific actors on the show two specifically were on every episode but then they'd swap out between other characters other i mean other actors each episode um but there was uh there was the main crowd that would always come back um i'll just tell you is whose line is it anyway okay you know this show they made it made a comeback uh Canadian guy on there, call him Mockery. He's from Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. And he's fucking hilarious. Ryan Stiles was on there. Still is on there. Um, Greg Proops. Drew Carey hosted it. You know, all that stuff. Now the new version has that... Has that, has that woman... Aisha, I think. Is her name... I'm not really a big fan of her... She kind of annoys me sometimes, but yeah. You can't bring Drew Carey back because he's on The Price is Right, which is a show I wanted to throw on this list. I did, but I didn't, and I didn't even put it in the honorable mentions. Because that's, that's a show, and as great as it is, it doesn't need my recognition. It's lived a legacy, and it continues on to this day. I don't, it's, you know, 
But anyway, whose line is it anyway? You don't know what to, what it is. You should watch it because I'm not saying you will laugh, but I could not stop laughing. It was probably the hardest I've ever laughed watching Whose Line Is It Anyway. Great content. Basically, there's four there's four actors sitting on a stage. Uh, there's a host, Drew Carey, or Aisha now, and he uh, pulls a category out of a hat, I think. I can't even remember now. And, you know, each category is a specific improv acting. Uh, uh, what's the word? It's a, it's a, it's a improv exercise. And, and, you know, the guy, the guys and gals, they get up on stage and they, they just improv this whole funny scene. And it's always funny. Sometimes it's not funny at all, but most times you're rolling on the floor laughing out loud. Too good. It's too, too good. Can't get enough of it. I can't get enough of you, baby. Now, number four is definitely, definitely one that uh, means a lot to me. I've watched this show over and over again, well over 10 times. I've seen every season well over 10 times. It was, it's funny. It can be dramatic and sad at points, but it's, you know, it's a comedy show. It features uh, all kinds of great actors throughout the whole series. Um... Actually, the first time I discovered the show was actually the first time I ever discovered how a TV series works. Like Before that, I didn't understand what seasons meant. I didn't understand that uh, new episodes got uploaded or were broadcasted every you know week or so when the season would come out. I just you know I just understood TV to be exist like I just thought it existed because I was young but when I when I discovered this show and actually realized what seasons were I was hooked and this was my first experience into what TV really is so I as soon as I finished this this series I'd start it over from season one right from scratch and do it again and again and again <laughs> I just keep doing it and I still do it sometimes nowadays We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but so the the title of this show is The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Hair. Love it. Can't get enough of it. I cannot get enough of it. And you know what? Still to this day, there's this one episode, and it's been featured online a lot. A lot. You'll see memes of it and and whatnot, but there's this one episode where Will's father abandons him. You know he comes back after after you know not not ever being with him his whole life, and he comes back, and then they're you know they have these plans of they're gonna travel the country in his dad's big rig, but then he he just abandons him again says ah some things came up I can't I can't be with you and actually Will Smith in that moment reacted so emotionally it was so moving because Will Smith himself has said that 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 moment made him feel he related so much to it because his father did the same thing to him in real life so his character was able to grab on to that that feeling from his real life and he was able to use that in this show and I'm telling you I don't care who you are if you watch that episode you don't have to watch any of the other episodes but if you watch that episode where Will's father leaves him you will 100% cry it is unbelievably moving for 
what the show was. It's crazy. It's crazy how you can attach yourself so strongly to these TV shows, and it happens. If it's a good show, you'll you'll become attached to it. The same way you're attached to a... No, I'm not going to say it. Not going to say it. You ain't going to make me. Bacon. So, if you haven't seen Fresh Prince, it, def- it still most definitely holds up to this day. I think. Yeah, you could definitely still watch it. And enjoy it. I mean, obviously there's a, there's things in there that you gotta, you gotta immerse yourself into the time. Like, there wasn't, they didn't have internet. They were still using big clunky phones and they had those phone, car phones and, and beepers. All that shit's referenced in there, but just put yourself in that moment. You know, it, really, I think any show can hold up if it's good enough. Because, yeah, even if it was made in the 40s, they got all this other I- ideals about life and different technologies. But the human condition is still the same. It's, 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 that sticks around. You can look back at any point in history, and that human condition still exists. Sure, you have different ideals and different, like I said, technologies and whatnot. But the condition stays the same. You travel anywhere in the world, people people have the same values. And the same fundamental core beliefs you know they might have weird traditions in their culture but the core just the human aspect of it is really similar to it you know we're all we're all similar in that way if you took away language to take away language and take away everything we own and just put us in a jungle take a take one person from every country and remove their vocal cords stick them in a jungle or on an island somewhere and you'll see nature you'll see the hierarchy system that uh, Jordan Peterson talks about you'll see that take effect. And that is what I'm talking about. But I shouldn't be, because we're talking about goddamn television shows, so let's move on. Number three. You, now, this show, although it's not controversial, well, it can be because everyone takes everything, at, you know, out of context. But what makes this show controversial is the main actor in the show because people uh, may or have definitely disagreed with what this person has done in their real life. But I want you to put that aside. And focus on this show for what it is. Because it's a fucking fantastic show. Super fresh. Definitely unique. Completely relatable. But at the same time, very funny. Uh, and But then it has, while that's happening, the drama comes in. And then it sucks you into this dramatic... Uh, comedy duo type vortex. I don't know. It's Oliver is really distracting me with his heavy breathing. Come here, Olive. Stop breathing so heavy. You sound like an old man. Come here. I think that's his way of saying, "Let me up." He just makes noises. Anyway, this show. 
If you haven't seen it, which you probably haven't because it's not that popular, you should definitely watch it. Even if you hate the person, um, the star of the show, just disassociate yourself with that. Actually, now that I think about it, there's an episode that relates to what he did in real life. Anyway, the show is called Louis. It's a show created by Louis C.K., starring Louis C.K. Um, and he writes it, and he directs it, and he even edits it, I, I think. Everything is produced and done from his point of view. He doesn't want any producers stepping in his way. And that's one of the things, one of the reasons I was attracted to Louis, and still am. Not sexually, but artistically. His form of comedy and just art in general is very refreshing. It's new. It's new and it's good. You know, because you can, you can have all kinds of unique type of art out there, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's good. It has to be new and it has to be good. And Louis has definitely covered those aspects this tv show is fantastic and what i was talking about the controversial part there's an episode where he you know he's 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 starting to date this girl and the relationship builds slowly through each episode but they haven't you know they're not really dating yet and then I can't remember exactly what happens but he just in the show he wrote that he just pulls down his pants and shows her his penis and that's exactly what happened in real life that's exactly what he got me too'd over and I I never really thought about it till now like it's interesting that he incorporated that in his show before it got released publicly that th- that he actually did that so he obviously you know he has some sort of attraction to the idea of just flashing women his penis and i mean that's not that's not something i really judge him over you know I, like it doesn't really bother me that he did that, cause it's not that bad. It's just a, it's just a, it's just a piece of skin. Like it's not. He didn't, he didn't. Uh, it's not like he raped someone. He didn't, uh, you know. And who knows the context of the situation? I mean, yeah, you shouldn't really do that. But like Bobby Lee is, how many times has he fucking gotten naked? in public and yeah you'd say it's it was him trying to be funny but maybe that's what how do you know that's not what uh louis was doing just trying to be funny maybe he was trying to be funny but also he thought while doing that i might actually be able to get something sexual out of this and if not then i'll just pull my pants up and and we'll move on you know he didn't he didn't push it any farther than that um, people like to think that as soon as any little thing happens, they have to automatically cancel, cancel this person, cut them out of their life, and completely boycott them, and whatever else. But it's like, you can't think of it that black and white. You gotta look at it as like a spectrum, you know. There's like the the rape over here, the really bad shit, and then over here, we've got like the you know the stuff that's kind of starting to push the boundaries, but it's you know it's something that can be addressed and overlooked, and you can just say, hey, you can inform the person, hey. 
you're heading in uh, dangerous territory. Maybe we should step back a little bit. You know? Rather than just shut them out of your life, rather than shut them out of the world, give them uh, give them a second chance. Everyone does stupid shit, but I mean, if if they you know if they take it way too far, they've obviously started here and slowly. Every time they'd get away with something new, they'd get away with something new. Then they'd get to the point of rape. You know, and then they keep getting away with rape, and they'll just keep doing it like Bill Cosby. But Louis, he's just, uh, he just had, you know, a little accident, a little, a little, a little, uh, you know, he's got the power because of his, uh, his stature of who he is. He's a very famous and rich comedian. So there's that at play. And then, you know, you got a lonely guy who's self-conscious he sees an opportunity that might get him some pussy, but um, but it might not. You know, he just took that risk, but he didn't take it too far. And we all do shit like that. So why do we got to blast his ass? Let's let him live. Let's bring him back. Bring back Louie. Ouch, my leg. And with that, brings us to number two. Number two. This show has been... uh, If you look at any top 100 list, top 10 list of, you know, best TV shows, which is what I did before... I made this list, and I noticed a common trend on all these lists that this TV show was either number two on every list or number one, or at least within the top five. And, but you know, before I even looked at these lists, I knew this show was going to be up there. I was debating on whether or not to put it out number one, or number two, and I'm still wondering right now if it deserves to be in the number one place. But we'll get to that once I reveal what number one is. But this show, this show, it it deserves a high ranking. And if you and there's been I've talked to people about this show who haven't watched it. And they say they've tried, but they couldn't get into it. <clears throat> and you know, as much as that hurts, because this show, what I'm about to explain, means a lot to me for many reasons. And I like to think of it as Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is one of those shows that you have to give it a chance. You really got to give it a chance. Because the first season is a, it's 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 hard to, it's hard to grip it, and it's one of those shows that you'll you you'd think I'm not gonna like this because it's all fantasy and dragons and stuff like that. But if you're not, even if you're not into that sort of genre, you'll still find yourself attracted to the Game of Thrones series if you give it a chance. If you can make it to season two, which I haven't yet, but I plan on it. And I know I'll enjoy Game of Thrones because look at how many people enjoy it. And I mean, that's not that's not a good thing to go by, but It, too, was always on, at least in the top five of every list I looked at. So when that's the case, you you, you know it's a good show. And you got to give it a chance. And Breaking Bad is definitely one of those shows you got to give it a chance. You got to give it a chance. But I, when I saw, and when most people, when most people saw that first episode 
when he's you got you got Brian Cranston. The last thing he was known for was Malcolm in the Middle, which I was already a fan of. And you see him the the first I can't it's in the first episode. I don't know if it's the first scene. I think it's the first scene. He's he's in his underwear in an RV um being chased down by the police. There's fire, there's like gas masks. There's he's got this apron flapping in the wind. His pants fly. Like there's all these visual there's these visual uh what do you call them? Foreshadowing events. That you don't realize it's foreshadowing anything because it's your first time watching it, but it's all it's all intriguing. You're like, what's going on? What is all this shit? And you're you're watching it looking at looking at uh Walter, Brian Cranston, and you're looking at him, and the last thing you know him for, known him for, was Malcolm in the Middle. So you're picturing like this dad, you know, laid back, kind of nervous, neurotic character. And that's what you see, but he's he's doing something way out of the ordinary. It's it's strange, but it's appealing. And you're like, what's going on in that RV? And it so from that first episode, I was hooked, which doesn't happen. There was something, there was something else I wanted to say, but I lost it. But that yeah, that usually. When I watch a show for the first time, I tell myself, I, ow, I'm going to give this, this show, th- um, three episodes to appeal to me. If it does not appeal to me within three episodes, I'm not giving it any more of a chance. Especially if each episode is an hour long. If it doesn't get me, within three episodes then you're done I don't want anything to do with you um cause you know that's how it should that's what you should do why would you why would you want to bore your audience for three episodes you you want to attract them as soon as possible and that's I I've always said first impressions are very very important because even if you had a bad first impression and then the the rest of the time is all perfect, good, flawless work you put forth, the person you gave that first impression is still going to have that first memory in the front of their head because that's what sticks with people. I'm not sure what the science is behind it, but I know it's true because it's it's happened to me and I've experienced it and you know it happens but this this show have I said what it is yeah it's Breaking Bad right you, you should know by now this show like god damn not only did it attract me in the first episode every episode following had so much detail put in put in place down to the color of clothing to you know just the way they looked at each other to the way they their lips quivered or there was so much immense detail put into every single aspect of the show every shot every you know they went above and beyond any other show would normally do and they did it to such a high degree that they actually had to create an app that you can download after the show was complete you could download this app and it gave you a full detailed list of every single episode or at least every season it told you exactly what was going on you see the you see the evolution of Walter White to Heisenberg 
you see it through the colors of his clothes. You see it through his facial hair, through his just his face, his face, uh, his facial expressions, the way he walks, his environment. And on top of that, the writing, they had a team of like 10 writers and the writing was superb. The shots in that show, there were so many unique and uh, brand new ideas that people haven't seen in a TV show that was put into Breaking Bad. Now we see them in TV shows all the time. But what we saw in, in Breaking Bad was new. And it was just, you know, when when you when you're when you get it when you're in, <laughs> when you're involved in a TV show, when you're when you're involved in it while it's being created, and you're waiting for the next episode to come out knowing that everyone else hasn't seen it as well. And when the show is such, so good as this one, it makes it, it's, it's, <laughs> it makes the experience that much more special. And you remember, you remember moments in your life based on, and you base it on what show was I watching during that time. Oh, that was when I was watching Breaking Bad. Like, when I think back to when I was going to Vancouver Film School, I I was in the process of watching the last season. That's when the last season of Breaking Bad was coming out. And I remember being in my dor- dorm room. I guess it wasn't a dorm. It was a, it was a condo with four other guys, three other guys. Anyway, I would sit in my room... And I, I was downloading the episodes. I was pre-ordering them on iTunes. So I'd come home from school. And it would it would already be downloaded. And I would just be like, oh my god, this is it. Like I remember the last three episodes. Each episode, my heart was pounding the entire time. It's so intense. Because you, you have... It's, it's not predictable at all. You cannot predict what's going to happen in this show. And that doesn't happen a lot. It gives me chills just thinking about how unpredictable it is. Because you'll be watching it. You'll have so many... You'll have all these thoughts in your head. Oh, I think this is going to happen. Or this is going to happen. Or the way the the plot and the story is moving towards a direction. You're like, oh, this is definitely going to happen. And then out of nowhere... Something you would have never thought of happens. And it just blows your mind every time. It's so incredible. Vince Gilligan, the creator of the show, is an absolute genius. I love Vince Gilligan. And I actually got to see him live in Vancouver. He did a talk. While... While... um. Breaking Bad, the final season was still going. I think there was it was there was three episodes still to be released yet, and that's when I saw him live in Vancouver, and he was just talking about Breaking Bad, and that's that was right when I was surrounded by Breaking Bad, and that was my life. Breaking Bad was was pretty well my focus, other than school. Breaking Bad was all I cared about. And so to get to see Vince Gilligan talk about the show, and we got to watch his favorite episode with him, and the last three episodes of the show still weren't even out yet, so he was like, it was so it was so fascinating and fun, and people, people, you know, there was people dressed up as, as Heisenberg, and there was people dressed up in the yellow fucking chem suits it was and you know Vince Vince knew what the final episode happens what happens in the final episode because they filmed it already and it was over for him it was over he knew 
So he kind of, he the whole time he's trying to avoid not spoiling it. But he's given little, little, barely, barely, barely teasers. And that gets you excited. Because it's him. It's Vince Gilligan. He's the creator. And he's right there. To, you know, he knows what's happen- what happens. And every, there was like, I don't know how many people were in this stadium that we were in. But it's so crazy to think that everyone there was involved in what he created to such a high passionate degree it's like he had this power in his hand he could literally just have spoiled the season the last three episodes right there which obviously he would never do but he could have he has power But he's one of those guys who who would never do something like that. No no one would, but I'm not saying anybody would, but he's so, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who would be capable of writing a show like Breaking Bad because he's so like, he's super calm. He's got like a soft-spoken voice. He just seems like a, like a casual, regular neighbor, like someone you don't even think about. But he has has these crazy, crazy ideas. Breaking Bad definitely is incredible. And it means, it has meant a lot to me. I watched it throughout high school. And I watched it when I, the first time I went back to Nova Scotia after moving to Alberta. That's when I discovered it, actually. And so there's that memory. And the memories all through high school of watching it. And then, and then finally at Vancouver High School is when it ended. Damn. Like it. Living in the moment of Breaking Bad being released at the time, that's like, it's different. It's different than if you've never seen Breaking Bad and you're just binge-watching every every season now that it's been out for however many years. Actually watching it while it's being made and you're waiting for each episode to come out, it's... You'll never get to experience that with Breaking Bad. (laughs) You'll never get to experience it. Because it's over. It's done. But I'm sure there will be another show that you can attach to. But, And I'm still wondering if I should put Breaking Bad at number one. I didn't want to put it at number one. Because... Everybody's, so many people would say Breaking Bad is their number one favorite show for all the reasons I just said and many more that I didn't even think of. So if you haven't seen it, I still obviously recommend it and give it a chance because I have talked to people who say they couldn't get into it. And definitely give it a chance. You have to. It's it's a show worth watching. For sure. So, number one. This show is fantastic. It's, uh, it as well, um, is a very unique idea, super unique, um, until this show came out, there was nothing like it, and since it's been out, there's been many shows following 
its uh, its uh, its format. There's even lots of YouTube shows that follow this this show's format. Um, now, I started watching it when it was already over, way 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 after it was already over. Um, because when it when it was around, I was too young to really understand it. I mean, when it was up and coming, you know, in the process of being made, I didn't understand it. I was too young, and it wasn't. A, it's not really a show for children. Although I shouldn't say that, because children can definitely get into it, and I've heard stories of children getting into it. But me back then, it's not something I was interested in. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's a comedy show, Spe- it's specifically comedy, but it's, it's, uh, different than comedy, it's not, it's not your typical, like, laugh track or laugh audience type sitcom show, there's no laugh track, there's no studio audience, but it's not really a sitcom either. It's like a documentary style guerrilla film. Not really guerrilla, but just like one camera angle or a few camera angles. No, it's like I think they consider it one camera angle. Um, and all the actors on the show, other than the main character, were in not known until they started on this show and I'm sure you've already figured it out by now if not um, it's The Office controversial in the sense that you might be thinking why would I put that at my number one well this show See, now, I still think Breaking Bad could possibly be number one, but The Office is such a competitor to this. The Office is obviously nothing like Breaking Bad. It's a whole different... It's a whole different uh, genre of show, of TV show. But it's... The the humor is definitely something you got to warm up to. Uh, when I first started watching it, I was like, this... I don't get this. This does not relate to me but again this is another show you got to give it give it a chance and once you get into it it's almost like there's a moment where something clicks it's like oh i get this humor now it really happens like that or at least that's what happened how it happened to me you understand that that type of humor it's super dry super dry and it's it almost comes across as like they're trying too hard, but they're not, but at the same time, it's like they're not even trying. I can't explain it. It's a, it's a, it's a type of humor that's, n- especially at that time, and even now, well, no, 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 no. Nowadays, it's more common, because you got shows like the, the, the ick the IT crowd, or the IT crowd, whatever you call it, and then Parks and Rec, which is from the same people, but... And, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Arrested Development, you know, there's lots of shows like that. Even Sugar Pine 7, before they, before they left, which they left recently, they had the Office-style show, and their YouTube, their YouTube group. Um, but besides the comedy aspect of it, you would think... You would think, how can a show that takes place in an office be interesting? But it is. It's so relatable. They did a very good job at making a show that makes it feel like almost real life in a sense. Obviously over-exaggerated, but it's so easy to relate to these characters once you get into it. 
it's easy and it's fun and it almost feels like the characters become your friends it really does and that's that's why I put it up here because it's so relatable and humorous and this is also one of those shows same with Breaking Bad that once I finished the entire series I went back and watched it again but I've watched The Office more times than I've watched Breaking Bad because only because Breaking Bad has has lots of commitment in that there's details you got to focus on even if you watch it again every time you and this goes for pretty well every show every time you watch it again you'll definitely find new t new details or or key pieces of information that you did not notice the last time you watched it and it doesn't matter how many times you watch it you'll always find something new and this is something my english teacher made me aware of um in one of his classes one day because he you know he's been teaching for however many years like 15 years and from day one he taught you know Macbeth because he's an English teacher and from day one he what they he had his students watch this Macbeth film you know made in the 80s or whatever and he he would say Every year that I watch this movie, I discover something new about it. And while we were watching it, he, he, you know, as soon as he discovered the new thing, he paused the film and he told us what he noticed now that he hadn't before. And you will notice this if you pay attention. And in the office, even if it is just a small comedy that doesn't have a lot of foreshadowing because each episode is not related to the last. It kind of is. Well, it is a little bit like, but it's not. It's not. It's not like Breaking Bad in that sense. So that's why I'm able to watch The Office more times because it doesn't. Uh, it's not that big of a commitment. But it's still. Uh, it's still a great, great show. A show that you can always come back to. A show you can jump into any episode and it's, and it's great. And people, some people don't like the last few seasons, but... And I mean, if when I first saw it, I kind of... It kind of felt wrong in a way because Steve Carell left and then there's all these new characters coming in but after the second time watching it you see oh these new characters are actually really funny and they're good actors as well like Ed Helms and uh, what's that girl's name the red haired girl can't remember but she's hilarious there's, there's actually two women that have red hair there's the girl that the British girl that takes over um, the manager position, the branch manager position. She just sits down and decides she's being the branch manager. But then there's the other secretary girl who takes over Pam's job. I can't remember her name. Yeah. So if you haven't seen The Office, give that a chance. If you're going to watch any of these... I recommend Louis, Breaking Bad, and The Office. My la the last three. I almost I I think like Breaking Bad and The Office. They're so they're like exact opposites of each other, but they're tied for number one. Like I had a tough I had a very tough time deciding what I want to put at my number one. Breaking Bad or The Office. It's like trying to choose which kid you like better. That's how I feel about these two TV shows.
but I made my decision and I put the office as number one. And you know what? I can be happy with that. So let me run through my honorable mentions here. I don't think we're going to do a Reddit run through because I don't even know how long we've been going because of this fucking timer. It doesn't, it doesn't give me a proper time. Let's see if I can change this. Wah, 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 hama out my back door. Da, 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 ba, da, ba, da, ba, ba. How do I? Because there's a two here, but there's no way I've been doing it for two hours. There's no way I've only been doing it for 15 minutes either. I don't even know. There's no way. There's no way I've been doing this for two hours, have I? Maybe I have. I don't know. Well, here's the honorable mentions. Um, and again, there's probably a bunch that I forgot about. But here's the here's the ones that I thought about adding to the list. But they didn't make the cut. Black Mirror. Freaks and Geeks. Top Gear. Survivor Man. Slash Man vs. Wild. Eastbound and Down. Planet Earth. Conan O'Brien. I wrote Planet Earth twice for some reason. Uh oh. Prank Patrol, Drake and Josh. Bill Nye the Science Guy. And the last one I thought of when I was talking about that 70s show is Punked. And I know there's a plethora of other shows I forgot. But, yeah, these are other shows I grew up watching or had a good time watching. Um, you might not be, fam be familiar with some of them, like Prank Patrol or Uh-Oh. Prank Patrol was... I'm pretty sure, yeah, that was definitely a Canadian show. This guy would uh, drive around in a, like a purple van. <laughs> this sounds weird, but he, he would, uh, you know, kids would contact him with things they want to prank their friends with. And whatever the elaborate prank would be, this guy would go to the links to set up this prank, and he had, like, these ninjas that would do all the work for him. And then, you know, they'd organize this this area where they would lure the friend's friend to. And, you know, like a spider, a massive spider would come out and scare scare them or something. Yeah, it was a... It's a definitely, definitely a kid's show. Like, you won't enjoy it as an adult. But that's a show that brings back memories. I'm not going to talk about the rest of these because they're only honorable mentions. Um, and I think I've been going for two hours, but I don't even know. So, that that is the end of her. Ladies and gentlemen, I... Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. And if you have any suggestions of what I should have put on the list, go ahead and write them in the comments. Or if you disagree with what I did, which you shouldn't because it's my list. It's, it's a list of my influential movies it's not the general public but you know you can still disagree i don't give a fuck tell me tell me whatever you want give me your own list if you have your own ideas of what you think the top 10 should be write your own list throw it in the comments and uh, with that being said um uh, that's it I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, episode 80. And I'll see you motherfuckers in the next one.
On 81. One step closer to 100. 100. 1 800 505 269. From the office. He. 1 800 505 269. 310 30 30. Greco. 310 30 30. Whoo!